Right. Uh, good evening. This is Ribuani. I'm your teacher. I'm from 10 Times Better Generation School Ministries. Glad to have you with us here today. And uh, first and foremost, we say Happy Wednesday. We hope you are having a great week. And we hope um, you level up and be with us. Theme of the year, as Pastor Budere has always been saying, it's moving to a higher level. You can never remain where you are. But um, for what it's worth, we continuously, progressively elaborate to better things, to higher things. That is the will and the purpose of God. We are happy you have joined us here today. And with that, we would like to start off with a word of prayer. And that way we delve into the word of God. Before that, we would like to say thank you to our returning subscribers. Thank you to everybody tuning in every single Wednesday to be with us, to go on the journey of faith as we are speaking about my faith walk, the faith walk of a believer, the faith walk that everybody literally embarks on. Is it easy? No. But it's worth it because the results, they are worthwhile because God is too good and we will keep on saying that. So with such, we'd like to extend our gratitude to the um, leadership of uh, 10 times better generations school ministries i know the senior uh, pastor budeli is always there supporting us uh, also as the ministry uh, back in masisi in venda um, as such we'll get straight into the word after prayer so won't you close your eyes with me and we pray thank you father for your goodness thank you father for your love thank you for today's word for we know it's such a word appointed for such a time and we know that, Father, when your word is sent out, it never, ever returns void. It always produces after its own kind. And we are thankful that the kind that the word of God produces is of great quality, time and time and time again. We are thankful that, Father, when your word is sent out, it does not return void. It always produces after its own kind. We are thankful that, Father, when we apply the very same word into our own lives, our lives, they will no longer be the same. Never, 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 but to the glory and the honor of your name. Thank you, Father, for your great love. Thank you for being with us always. And lastly, Father, I say, let your children hear that which you've prepared for them. Not what I want to teach, but that which, Father, you specially prepared for today. I know that, Father, after hearing your word, our lives, they will no longer be the same. Never, never, never. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I pray and I thank you for today's word. Amen. As such, without wasting time, we'll get straight into the word. We are talking about my faith walk. Um, when we say my faith walk, we know that um, faith, as the word calls it, is to believe or to see already what is unseen. Um, as the dictionary puts it, is that uh, faith is the evidence. If ever something is to do with evidence, is to say that um, that thing exists. Evidence proves that something exists. Hence we say the faith walk, my faith walk, my faith evidence. Evidence of what? Of things not yet seen, of things to come. The evidence comes in the sense that whether you see it with your physical eyes or not, you are confident that the guarantor, the author and the finisher of your faith, which is God, that which he says he will do, he has done already. You don't need to see it physically. You see it spiritually first, knowing that it will manifest physically. Because what? The physicality comes after the spirituality because everything starts from the spirituality hence we say we walk the faith walk not by sight but by faith it's vice versa we do not walk by sight we walk by faith whereby faith comprehends it sees the things that are not yet seen by the physical eyes and by faith i can tell you you will fight every single battle and you always come out victorious does that mean life is easy? No. Does that mean you will not get challenges of various kinds? No. It means that I miss the chaos, I miss the complexities, I miss the difficulties. God is there with you. God is mindful of you and God will always see you through. Hence, we walk by faith and not by sight. I'll read uh, from today uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 
we say all the time that as Joshua chapter 1 verses 8 reads that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness whereby when you do that uh, you go to the word and you make sure that the word of God the book of the law does not depart from your mouth nor your sight what does that mean? You constantly spend time in the Word. You read through the Word of God. That way you are careful to do according to what is written in it. What is written in it? Timothy reads that uh, all Scripture, all of the Word of God is given by inspiration of God. If it is given by inspiration of God, it means that with the Scripture, God is talking to us and when he's talking to us it says that the word of god all scripture is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work what does that mean for us? We are not complete without the word of God. What completes us is the word of God. Hence, we say we need to spend time in the word of God. That way we are complete. That way when we speak faith, we know that uh, we got the corrections. We got reproof. We got instruction in righteousness. And remember, righteousness is a gift. But we know that when we get the word of God, we become complete. We become well able to walk this faith walk. We know that we are thoroughly equipped for every good work like the word of God says. Are you not going to meet trials of various kinds? Yes, you will. But when you meet them, you act differently because you have the word of God. The word of God, which is an inspiration of God. Hence, Whenever you feel pressed to go through the certain scripture, just know that is all God. That is God talking to you. So never ever undermine that. Never take that for granted. Just know that God is faithful. God is mindful. God is always there for you. How does that then link this to faith? If we are talking about our faith walk, I want to remind you that what the word of God says is that uh, by faith, we do not worry about anything. We cast all our cares, all our concerns, all our anxieties, all our troubles unto him. Why? Because the word of God says, each day has enough trouble of its own. I know um, my pastor usually says that uh, worry, it can kill you much faster than any other disease. But then if you do not worry, what do you do? You have faith. Who do you have faith in? You have faith in God. I'll take you into the key scripture for today, which is Matthew chapter 6. It is speaking about worry. It is speaking about you looking at your problems. It is speaking about you looking at your debt and glorifying your debt. It is speaking about you looking at your sickness and glorifying your sickness. It is speaking about one who looks at their um trials of various kinds and not know how to go through that and not know how to navigate life and not know how they're going to see or make their ends meet. The word of God is saying here that do not worry. And it reads, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life the, uh, more than food and the body more than clothing? This is ranking now. Life is more important. And as much as clothing is good, but the body is more important. Look at the birds of the earth. This is the word of God. For they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather in bands. As much as they do not do that, yet the heavenly Father, he feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? And it goes further. Verses 27. Which of you, by worrying, can add a cubit of his stature, a second in his life? 
Worry, yes, it kills. Worry is not profitable. It is destructive rather than constructive. And as such, it doesn't bring about any good thing. It does not even add to life, but it subtracts out of life. So walking my faith walk as we are proceeding here, I want to tell you that uh, it's not been easy. It's been difficult. I, like everybody else, loves clothes. And as much as I love clothes, I had to decide first, what is more important? Is it the clothes? Is it God? What is more important? The food? Or is it life? Then I realized that uh, the word of God said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest shall be added upon. Then I thought to myself, if that is the prioritization of God, if that is the right order of things from a God perspective, then if I'm seeking his kingdom first and his righteousness and the rest shall be added upon me, then it means that the very same God who tells me to do this then he would have to worry about the things that I should have been worrying about. Then he would have to worry about what I eat, what I drink. It's not my problem anymore. Then he would have to worry about my life. That in my life I progress. That in my life I am successful. And then God said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest shall be added upon. What is the rest? The rest is good life. The, le the rest is health, it is wealth, it is good success. Every other thing that you wish, that you desire, God says he will add that to you. But you need to prioritize right. You need not worry. But you need to seek. Instead of worry, you seek. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And when you do that, in just that, there is benefits. And just by seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, God says that, then the rest I will give to you. I'll continue to read further, 28 until the, the last one. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his thrown into the oven, Will not he will will he we will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Verses 31. Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. The Heavenly Father knows that you need money. He knows that you need health. He knows that you need shelter. He, needs that you, he knows that you need clothes. He knows all your needs. Because our needs and ones, they vary. The proportionality of it is not the same. Some are seeking this, some are seeking that. Some are on this level of grace, some are on the other one. And every one of those needs, God, he knows them. And as much as he knows them, he's saying, worry not, worry not about your needs. But yours be. To seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, they shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry its own things. Sufficient for the day is, in all, is its own trouble. Which therefore means that each day has enough trouble of its own. And therefore, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you eat, what you drink. Yours should be seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and God will then take care of the rest for you. My faith walk. I remember 
at a point in life, life was not easy, life was difficult. I was literally living hand to mouth. I'm sure many of us go through that as we grow. But in my hand to mouth situation, I decided to say, you know what? I'm not worried anymore about what shall I eat, what I shall drink. I, I'm not worried about how I will even get to work because I'm making just enough to go to work, come back and feed. But then I thought, hey, if I worry about that, then I will miss the glory of God. And the word of God says, seek first my kingdom and I, my righteousness and the, rest shall, I, and the rest I shall add upon. Then I thought to myself, wait, step back, go back one step. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And knowing that he who has promised is faithful and he who has promised is God. Then I went back and I said, okay, fine. I'm not worried about myself anymore. I'm not worried about what I shall eat, what I shall drink, what I shall wear. I'm not worried that uh, I'm living head to mouth. I'm not worried that uh, I don't have plenty. But mine is to do as the word of God says. To seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. My guarantee was the faith. My guarantee was that uh, the word of God says that if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the rest shall be added upon. Then God, I'm taking you at your word. How you do it, I do not know. But I know that God, you will do it. Was it easy? No. Was the mind challenging me? Yes. The mind told me, boy, wake up. Life is real. I told the mind, hey, you shut up. God is real. Faith is real. Righteousness is real. And you know what I did? I said, God, as your word says, cast all your cares, cast all your anxieties unto God, for he will make a way for you. I did exactly that. I took it all to God in prayer. I started walking out of the physical into the spiritual. And boy, oh boy, I can tell you, things, they change, things, they catapulted, things, they got better and better. I moved from a place whereby I was living from hand to mouth to living such that I even had a savings. Not just a mere savings, but a good savings pocket for someone my age at the time. I had plenty I had abundance and I want to tell you and encourage you today to say as much as um, life is presenting its difficulties, as much as we are not getting through X, Y, Z the way we would have intended, as much as you are not where you had planned to be, say 10, 20 years ago, 5 years ago, as much as you feel like you are not reaching your goal, or as much as you feel your life plan is not moving the way you wanted, know that God is there. Know that there's nothing impossible with God. Look at me today. I am a product of God's word. I remember singing that only you are holy, only you are worthy, only you are wonderful. For there is no one else like you, Lord, who is faithful, ever true. All my heart, my life is a testimony. I know what it is to be broke. I know what it is to be poor. I know what it is to not have. I know what it is to lack. I know what it is to have today by the grace of God. I know what it is to abound by the grace of God. I know what it is today to live in answered prayers. Because God loves us all, individually, independently. I want to bring to you that don't give up in life. No, it's not easy. It's difficult. But hey, pick yourself up. Brush yourself up. Do as the word of God says. Yes, I know you've got things that you need to go by. Faith is not um, logical. Faith is not for the logic of the world. Faith is for the logic of the Spirit. And the logic of the Spirit says, 
amongst the difficulty, amongst the complexity, amongst whatever you are going through. Know this and know this very well. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, they will be added to you. Speak to your problems. Tell them where to get off. So to all the business people, to all the students, to all the fathers, to all the mothers, to all the sisters, I want to encourage you to say, Beloved, God loves you. It's not easy, yes. But taking or choosing a journey with him is worth it. Because there we know businessmen, they are profitable. There we know that students, they not only attain good marks, but they go beyond just being ordinary to being extraordinary. Because first it is done spiritual, then physically. My challenge to you is, the burden is heavy. Why don't you just carry it all and give it to God? Because he says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and I will take care of the rest. While you're seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, while you're spending time in the word, while you are finding out your true identity in Christ, let God take care of the rest. What is your true identity in Christ? That you have conquered sin and death, but I'm still sinning. The truth is you've conquered sin and death. And the sooner that resonates with your spirit, the sooner you will know who you really are. You are bigger than life. You are bigger than sin. You are bigger than death. You are bigger than lack. You are bigger than poverty. You are bigger than all your problems. In actual fact, you are the pioneer of your own life. And you will only go as far as you say with your own mouth. Be careful what comes out from your mouth. Let it be life for your own life because you are your own prophet. And as you are walking this faith walk, don't do it carnally. Don't do it logically. Do it as the word of God says. The word of God says, do not be anxious about anything. But through prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. It is for you to speak. It is for you to tell God. It's for God to execute them. How he executes them, is it's for him. It's God's business. Yours is to tell him. And yours is to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That is the right order of things. Yours is to believe even though things don't look possible. The impossible is made possible by God. Some say the word itself says, I am possible so there's nothing impossible with god amen as such uh, we've come to the end let us make our quick confession and then we wrap up and we meet again next week but you repeat after me i request that you do it with your eyes closed let's go thank you father for your goodness for your love. Thank you, Father, for you are mindful of me. I am thankful that, Father, I continue to prosper in every good work. And therefore, Father, I say this. I cast all my cares, my anxieties, my worries, my shortcomings unto you. And I know that you are my Father, and you will make a way for me. I don't have all the answers. But I know that Lord. As your word says. You will reveal for me. In part. Always. And I know that father. As I seek first. Your kingdom. And your righteousness. The rest is added upon me. That's why I say. I am successful, Lord, in my studies, in my life, in my businesses, in all affairs of my life. My success is guaranteed in him, Christ, because I do not seek success. I seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and i know that when i do that the rest is added upon the rest is health the rest is wealth good success flourishing signs and wonders money all of these things they follow me i'm not worried about tomorrow because i know that each day has enough trouble of its own and therefore i submit my ways to god and i say lord my heart my life let it be a testimony of your goodness let it be a testimony of your love let it be a testimony lord of your miracles i am a miraculous being and signs and wonders they will follow me here on earth i'm thankful that father lord through christ i have conquered sin i have conquered death and therefore sin and death they are not my problem i've already dealt with them through christ mine lord is to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and i say father by faith i am prosperous in every good work by faith in my life lord i reign i rule and i dominate by faith lord i'm not moved by what i see but i move what i see by what i believe and therefore lord i say i am the christ that you people will see here on earth because you will manifest and continue to manifest in me and through me in jesus mighty name thank you father for your goodness thank you for your love amen hallelujah i am Ribwani I'm your teacher. I'm from 10 times better generation school ministries. And I say in your life continue to reign, to rule and to dominate. 